All right. T today, we have, I say this every week, and I know people are like, I know you say it's every week, but we got great guests. We got great guests. What, the, what are you going to do? <laughs> so, <laughs> we have another great guest, Joel Thompson, the Modern Herb Company. Um, and, and Modern Herb, and, and, and you correct me when, when the second I step out, but I think is really one of the best, most respectable uh, processors uh, of hemp. They are a, a processor extractors of hemp and Delta-8. They're doing the Delta-8 thing right. This stuff isn't coming out of a tub. Like, uh, from what I understand, your D8 is actually certified by the state of Oregon. Is that correct? That's correct. It's, it's tested at the same level of certification for the OLCC market, which is the, the recreational cannabis market here in Oregon. Um, our, some of our, uh, of our distillate does go into the market, and so it's got to be tested in such a way that's like a control study. So they're taking more tests per batch as opposed to potentially cherry picking or just one batch. So we're getting more um, you know, confirmation that we're getting consistent potency, but most importantly with any distilled product that came from a conversion is testing for residual solvents. Those, you know, really the, the reagents used in the process. We're, we're confirming every batch that we put out is, you know, free of any of those residual solvents, consistent potency across the board, and that's to go into the rec market. And then we're able to divert some of that to the open market, being that we're proving that it's, you know, compliant under the 0.03%. Also, people love hearing that stuff. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's what I, and there are other folks doing that, to be to be frank, and thankfully so, because that's what needs to happen. Is, no doubt. Um, one of the gaps in the hemp industry is, you know, uh, some of the lax in, in regulation. And relaxed regulation is can be good for some things, but when it comes to consumer safety, we've got to be there because that's what preserves yeah. us to keep everybody safe and keep this industry going. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't mean to break up your intro there, but yeah, yeah. tell us about yourself, man. Tell us your background. Mm. How did, how did all this happen? How did, it, how did you become the chief operations officer for the modern company? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so um, I myself, um, I'm originally from, from San Diego, but uh, California. Okay. I moved to Oregon five years ago to start a cannabis uh, edibles company, actually with my parents. Okay. Um, treats wow. on the market today. Yeah, it was a big turnaround from having a 25-year uh, Marine uh, stepdad to then he retires and wants to do something with cannabis. And um it's just right place, right time. So I moved up here to start that. Um, I then got introduced to some individuals um, making uh, live resin extracts and doing processing because I was trying to find the best quality extract to go into my product. And um, I jumped onto that team actually as well. And we were one of the first groups putting out um, like a true 100% live resin, THC live resin vape cartridge. Uh, and I kind of saw that, you know, at that time it was like all distillate and isolate in the market and mm -hmm. too. Um, but we really were right at the starting point of people recognizing live resin for its high terpene quality, um, just breadth of cannabinoids and really just like having that dab in a vape. And we were kind of lucky to be privileged in that time to be one of the first movers. And so I was part of that team that we went from, you know, a team of eight to I then became the general manager of Oregon. We became a multi-state operator, stretched out to California, Washington. Uh, and then I was managing, you know, 120 people. Uh, fast forward two years later and we're, you know, running multiple farms or labs. And so I saw that growth happen, um, you know, but I, and I was thankful for my time with that company, but it wasn't something that um, was mine per se. And the founder of Modern Herb Co., uh, Ashley Dallinger, is actually my, my my partner in life, as well as now business partner. And she was going to these hemp events. I was going to them with her on weekends. And, you know, we just kept going around. Um, actually, I will say one more thing that when I'm in the rec space, we started working with a farm uh, and I got to give them kudos to this called East Fork Cultivars. And they're a um, one of the first uh, organ tilth, uh, organic certified hemp farms. Um, in the country, in Oregon, but then also USDA in the country, organic, sustainably grown, like really doing it right. If, if you were, to, you know, in terms of farms and proprietary genetics, and they had a lot of type three or CBD dominant genetics. And I was, we started running those in the rec market and I'm in a privileged place to have access to all these different, you know, THC dominant cannabis dabs and, and, and vapes. 
I work a lot. I, got, I do a lot. And um, I found myself falling back to a lot of the CBD dominant varieties that they had because they were just really nice and invigorating, put me in like a unmesswithable middle, we kind of call it. And it was just yes. good, smooth buzz. And I really enjoyed it. Got a lot of positive like use out of it personally. And that I have to say was like the maybe subconscious, um, you know, inspiration two years ago where I'm like, there's something to this mm -hmm. but market. Just as we see in hemp today, everyone just wants highest potency, highest THC for the cheapest price. And, and CBD is, you know, maybe 10% of our sales. So it was something to it, but it wasn't fully developed. Um, fast forward a year and a half. Um, now I'm going to these hemp events all across the country with my partner and she's trying to get a feel for what we want to do with Modern Herb Co. And I'm looking around and I had, we had run some of that live resin and I'm walking around just showing it to people smell my jar, smell the slide resin. And it's like nothing they'd seen, right? And it reminded me of five years prior in cannabis where everyone's distillate or, you know, RSO or just kind of going for either the cheapest way to manufacture it in terms of an RSO or the highest potency, but we're leaving out all the magic that the plant had, the terpene yeah. profile and the whole profile of it. So that sparked us to um, put together a team to go after this last year and launch Modern Herb Co. with a, a live resin infused product. So that um, I officially made the switch uh, to the open market. I still do have a rec business um, personally with some partners and great folks running that. But my focus now is on Modern Herb Co. We went to some of those same farms. So East Fork cultivars. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. Like you go to their farm and it's like, uh, I love how Mason, their CEO puts it. It's like, They've got this beautiful organic hemp farm, these beautiful genetics, you know, sour pineapple, llama kush. These are proprietary genetics to have. Then on the other side of this chain link fence and what he calls his like medium security prison, he has the same genetics, but in the OLCC side, in the rec market. But, you know, that's required part of it. And oh. that's just such a funny part. It's like, you know, this is an open hemp farm and they do like, you know, the partner planting with like lavender and potatoes and such. So it's yeah. Well, hemp farm, and then you just see like the controlled part, the OLCC. But generally speaking, you know, cannabis sativa, cannabis sativa, it's the same genetic. It's just hemp is, you know, they bred that down to be lower THC. Um, so we were able to, I've been working with them for four years already, but always on the OLCC side. So this last year was our first time that I went down there, we harvested, and I'm able to do it off the, just off the hemp farm. Um, and so that was an interesting experience. Wow. Yeah, so that's kind of a long-winded answer of, you know, we saw this opportunity and um, we went and sourced not only from East Fork Cultivars, uh, Ladyland Organics is an organic farm in Bend that has some other unique genetics. We're in the bedrock of um, some really, you know, they're doing great work over on the East Coast and North Carolina and some other areas as well. But there's a sure. hemp revolution of in terms of genetics. You know, it's not just industrial fiber that we had five oh, years ago. Yeah. Uh, there are terpene rich with, you know, therapeutic compounds coming through in this hemp that, you know, I, I would have mistaken for cannabis and it is cannabis, right. But a THC flower, you know, just, just some years ago. So it's a perfect time to be launching something that's, you know, speaking to that, that live resin element. Um, but then I got to also mention our third farm we found was out in a trip to Texas, uh, Tejas hemp and got to give out a shout out to Aaron, the founder of that. They're in Dripping Springs, Texas, and they um, they do the CBDV and um, Varin genetics. So they've got some really unique genetics there. So those were the three main farms. We made a plan and we harvested all that fresh frozen hemp and brought it all back to Oregon and, and processed it. And that's now the base of our lines of modern Urco products. Wow. That's great, man. Congratulations, really. Like yeah. you've done a lot in this business in a short period of time. Yeah. And that's, yeah, it's, that's to be it's like the dog years of cannabis, you know, it's like, huh. like it's, it's five years essentially to one. So I do feel like I've been in it, you know, for 20 years with the five years that I've got in. Um, and, and I, and I love it, you know, it's, it, there's, there's not a, a dull moment, you know, it's just, no doubt. we're in such a nascent phase, you know, if you look back to like the rich history of like distillers and people making spirits and you have like, specialization you have people that are master distillers master like maturationists master blenders yes. we don't really have that in cannabis and that to me is just exciting you know we can um there's still so far to go there's master distillers of one spirit 
You know what I mean? Not like ten spirit. Hey. Like we do this. We just make bourbon. You know what I mean? Not like bourbon vodka gin and blah 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 blah. blah you know, it's yeah. it's interesting because you do see where all this is eventually going. You know. And, mm -hmm. and I'd like you to kind of touch on some stuff because I think there are people who don't really understand the concept of live resin, especially here, you know, as we get further east, where we're not as immersed in the culture as, you know, the three or three states that, that comprise the entire West Coast. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's funny to me to say that, right? Because it's like 16, 20 states. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, Talk about live resin and, and the process and how that differs. We talked about isolate and CO2, but let's talk, talk about the hydrocarbon extraction process and what that does. And then after that, we'll kind of go into talk about a little bit of DA because I think Perfect. there's a lot about that. You know? Yeah, happy to. So one distinction I, I, I got to make because it's just a common uh, thing that people make between the two. So you have two elements of live resin and I'll kind of break it down first. And that's when we say live, that actually has more to do with the harvest technique than it does the extract. So okay. we can have live resin and we can have live rosin, or live hash. Live just means it was harvested and immediately frozen within, I aim for 60 minutes, within an hour of harvesting the plant. Because the second I chop down the plant, it starts to go through a conversion process. So okay. different cannabinoids start converting Terpenes start off-gassing, converting. The plant's dying, so it's trying to kick out and do what it can before you know it's over. And people so, understand this when you talk about fruits and vegetables. It's like the same thing, you know. Yeah, exactly. That vine ripe tomato is going to taste yes. it's something that got picked from the vine. It starts going through conversion. Yes. Um, just like you know, when you have a plant on a bud on, on a plant, be it cannabis or hemp, it's the same. Um, it's going to have a different nose, a different profile than once I go through three weeks of burping a jar, you know, to cure it to a final finished flower. And you see big changes like in like your Kush genetics and certain ones. Um, so that's the first basis is live, meaning it was fresh frozen immediately um, uh, from the harvest. So you're locking in that initial profile. What live rosin is, is I take that and I put it through a solventless process, uh, making hash. Um, is either like through a uh, through ice hash or dry sift, and then I press that to make a rosin, which is a great product. Um, it's something we will be launching probably by the by Q3 with the hemp space. Um, but it's different in the sense of butane as opposed to that. So it's live rosin, live resin. I'm taking that same fresh frozen hemp. Um, and one thing to note, actually, there when we when we say fresh frozen hemp, um, most hemp or most bulk harvesting is done through like bean pickers. They're like mowing the whole plant, picking that up and harvesting it. We, it, and then we're not, you know, there's no, it's, it's just what it is. We have to trim. So we actually take the plants, we, we trim it down, pull off all the fan leaves and then hand harvest the buds. We've looked at, I've been doing it for now. This is my sixth year doing it. I've looked at every machine out there. Nothing is, as quality focused and even still efficient as hand harvesting, hand shucking the buds. So we um, are ensuring that the fan leaves or these big leaves come off because if I run that material with the fan leaves on it, it's a little vulgar, but it sound it smells a bit like rotten lettuce if you let it if you keep those fan leaves. Oh, wow, Phil will will contaminate your end oil. So we have to trim off those fan leaves and then hand shuck the, the buds and then immediately freeze them. So it's, it's quite labor intensive, um, but the result of that is then when I take those hand shuck buds that are frozen, we then keep it frozen, you know, in a freezer truck, get it to the lab, store it in a big, you know, industrial freezer. And then when you're ready to process it, it's even make it colder. You put it down to like you know, negative 60, get it as cold as possible. And then with BHO, butane hash oil, which is what we're making, it's different from solventless and that solventless is just water as your solvent to knock off the trichome heads. Um, butane is kind of a perfect solvent because it, it, it actually makes the whole trichome head um, liquefy essentially and separate from the plant material. Wow. Um, and it completely strips and pulls that out. And so then what you're left with after you make that initial reaction where I'm combining the butane at a low temperature with 
And it's actually at this pressure, it's liquid. So butane you see is a gas, this is a liquid. It fully saturates the material. And then it goes through a collection chamber where now I'm left with a slurry, if you will, of uh, the cannabinoids, terpene, and the butane. Uh, the great thing about butane is it boils at about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So at room temperature, it's boiling. So what you then do is you put it through a purge, you put the, this, this um, you know, pre-purged extract um, in a vac oven, and you put it some mild heat, you pull vac, so you're pulling suction, and it will pull out all, every bit of butane. Um, it's then tested to parts per billion, like with a B, is as fine as you can get it, um, to ensure that all the butane and residual solvents are pulled out of the product. And then what you're left with is a highly rich, you know, terpene rich, full spectrum extract. Um, and, and different there being from hash in that solventless is great, but I, we've found that the terpene content pulled off of BHO, butane, there's something with that reaction. You're going to get higher terpene contents, you know, averaging eight to 10% in the raw extract. Wow. Yeah. And, and then is, the, is it higher cannabinoid content also or just terpene content? Slightly better yield, if we said it that way, in terms of so higher potency, you know, whether okay. it's funny, whether it's CBD or THC based, average live resin is going to be about 65% target cannabinoids, so CBD or THC, whereas your average hash might be more like 40 to 50%. Okay. Um, and, and the reason being is hash has to go through a spine of a micron filtration. So you're getting more plant matter that'll come right. through hash, where with um, BHO, you're getting little to no plant matter because we put it through a finer filter and you're just getting more concentrated um, final output. But it's, you know, of a, of a pound of flour, frozen flour, you're going to see about a 4% yield. So that's only going to get you like 12 to 15 grams of live resin. If you think about wow. That. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. And that's super concentrated, generally super flavorful because of all the high terpene content. You know, exactly. it's and effective because you're getting both concentrated cannabinoids and concentrated terpenes kind of working in synergy with one another. Exactly. And that's the important part there is that it's, it's in the ratio that the plant, you know, created, you know, we can, we can play Frankenstein and add in terpenes or do these different, you know, adjustments, but really like the sour pineapple, for example, we get from these four cultivars, it's got the perfect amount of you know, beta carophyllene, myrcene, limonene to be that effect you want plus the naturally occurring you know cbg cbd a cbg a so these acidic form cannabinoids because live resin is still partially in that like raw acidic form um, so then yeah those base oils um, are in that raw form a hot extract if you will you concentrate a you know 0.3 percent hemp flour I extract that, it's gonna generally concentrate five to six times. So now the final extract is gonna be, yes, 65% CBD, but still two to 3% THC. So to get around that, um, because that's not federally compliant, we use that live resin as um, essentially you're flavoring your base oil with the live resin. Okay. So that, whether we're you know, about to touch on D8, whether it's D8 or, you know, we have a CBD variety as well, um, whatever base oil, be it a CBD or, or a Delta-8, you're, you're infusing in that, that live resin to give the strain-specific profile. Um, so I'm still getting that additional, you know, 10 to 15% other terpenes um, and other cannabinoids that are coming through. And then those are what we then take to all of our products, via, you know, our cartridges, vapes, stabs, um, tinctures, soft gels, gummies, um, it's, it's following that same strain specific direction and, and most importantly for us, farm specific. So we, we call out what farm this came from because again, none of us would be here if it wasn't for the farm. And, and, oh, it's, and it's, awesome. I, it's funny how many industries can say that, but very few turn around and actually say that, you know what I mean? It's like right. farmers, like this mystery entity that makes everything yeah. happen, but doesn't get any credit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's cool, man, because you, you really kind of broke it down and how this works. So you would think, if you had to say, I know you're going to be introducing rosin later in the third quarter, but if as a consumer, you, are you saying that you get a better product with the resin than the rosin because of the concentration and you're still getting more terpenes? 
And I think what, when I hear people say, when they talk about rosin, it's always about the flavor. You know what I mean? It's always about this, oh, it tastes like the fruit. It tastes like this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, very, very rarely, you may say I don't hear it, but I don't hear it in the same way that I hear about potency and effectiveness as I do with the live rest. Right. Yeah, I just say they're, they're just different. <clears throat> You know, I love them both for their each, you know, unique piece. And, you know, if we're speaking like to a dab, for example, might be a good comparison. Um, you're going to still have plenty of flavor and flavor in that, um, that live rosin or that solventless dab, but it, it's going to be just a different where we're going to get more liquid terpene in the live resin. And it's like what we call sauce in that mm -hmm. category, a lot more sauce to it. So it's you know, maybe eight to 10% terpene versus six to eight on the, the, the solventless, both are still flavorful, um, but it's more likely, depending on how good of an extraction you do on making the hash, you're more likely to get some of that chlorophyll or plant matter flavor to come through. Okay. Depending, and that just depends on like hash is just a series of filtration bags. Right. And, you know, anywhere from, I believe like 40U to 120U. And that just means like how fine the filtration is. So if I get the 120U, that's like the cream of the crop. It's going to be the right. best. It's going to be all flavor, probably actually more terpene. Because, you know, maybe 100 is like a mixed ratio. If I'm just dabbing that, that's going to be all flavor. But now my yield is like 1%. I'm not really right. getting much. So that's like four, four grams of half. Um, whereas you get down to the 40U and the lower, this 40 to 60 is what folks use for edibles. Um, because it's going to still have good potency, but it's got more of that green plant flavor. So it depends kind of, you're talking about like, you know, blending and different things. It's, there's an art to that of what grades you want to use. Some folks will put this part, go to edibles, this part goes to dabs, and this top part might go to babes. And maybe you combine some of them in different ratios, but with live resin, it's, it comes out, this is the raw crude extract. Um, and it's kind of more homogenous, if you will. It's all turkey rich. It's all kind of there. Um, and then beyond that, it's, it's best to have both because you will find that some strains, we'll figure out why this is, but sorry, some cultivars, more correct to say, some genetics, some cultivars will be better washers and some are better at blasting, better to go to, to butane hatch oil. Um, I'm sure we'll find out why. I generally, my guess is it's terpene profile. We find that limonene dominant varieties do not wash as well. Um, and they're very good for live resin. So there's some affinity maybe worth butane towards limonene, uh, you know, the lemon uh, terpene, whereas water being your main solvent in, sol in uh, solventless processing, um, maybe water has some polar, you know, affinity to, to the, the limonene terpene. So I think you're right. I have a theory on that and that the, the terpenes are hydrocarbons and exactly. the butane are hydrocarbons. Yeah, And I think it's almost like an oil to oil thing. You know what I mean? Right. So you blended yeah. three oils. I mean, can you really tell like what's in there? No, it's just a mix of oil at this point. You know what I mean? Because it's right. all sort of homogenous with one another. Yeah. Uh, water and, and oil don't really do the same thing. Exactly. That's why it's best. To, and that's why it's like the most important thing for a hash washer is like his SOP, but then probably right in line with that. So his standard operating procedure, what he does and what order, because it's all very technical, but right next to it is his book of business. Like, okay, this one did really well. This one was a low performer. And you just go after the genetics and it tends to be, it doesn't matter so much who grew it, but actually what the genetic is. You find right. out this one's a winner, then you know it's going to be a winner again. And so that's what we want to set ourselves up is, okay, these ones that are good for solventless way and the want to grow that are better for, for live resin or maybe have a unique profile that you can't really express the same way, um, we'll send that to, to the BHO. So they both have their place. Um, it's just kind of, you know, maybe by the genetic is like what your desire is as a consumer. Do you want something that's, you know, um, just a little bit more softer, true to plant that is going to, and you're not afraid of a little bit of a green possibility of some green flavor coming through? Or do you want just a very kind of like hyper rich concentrate um, that's got those terpenes and more homogenous than the, your live resin? And I, consumers, I, of course, are kind of wanting more yeah. of that. You know what I mean? I think that's like the the holy grail now. It's got to look a certain way, it should smell a certain way. You know, right. it should taste a 
way. And, and you know, things always progress. It's funny because like we're, I had a whole list of questions and we're kind of got off on stuff. We're not going to get to half of these questions yet, which is totally okay. That means it's got to yeah. bring you back. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, that's exciting um, stuff. Okay, no doubt, man. Like, the, but I think we're you're really giving some some really really good and informative information. You're answering questions for people. There's a lot of there's a there's a lot of folks, especially here on the East Coast, who are just like, what in the world is all these things? And it becomes a little intimidating after a while, you yeah. know, especially like as these new cannabinoids come out. And we're, we could do a whole another segment on that. We won't get into that today. Oh yeah. <clears throat> so, the, what I think is most interesting is that I think what don't what you touched on it, but most people don't know that live resin is a process. It is the the flash freezing and then everything that sort of happens from there. It's not necessarily yeah, the, the live pre <clears throat> live yeah. and resin for BHO and rosin for that. But yeah. but, but the the, the live part is it, it, just just that. Like you could have a live distillate, a live crumble, a live uh, uh, sugar. Yeah. A, you know. So and I think sometimes people think that live resin is just talking about texture and not necessarily. Right. You know the actual extraction or you know flash freezing process and, preservation yeah and the market's mm -hmm. helping us you know uh, live resin is becoming um more popular and i mean so when i when we first started doing the live resin carts five years ago in oregon i'm running around sampling out shops and i give my whole pitch like i just did to you this is live resin we fresh froze it here's the videos yep. and i get to the end and they look at it and they're like well it's a little dark for a distillate Oh, it's not a distillate. It's not, right. a distillate. it's not a distillate. It took time, but then fast forward 18 months, everybody knows what live resin is. Now that's the standard. It's like live resin, solventless, and distillate is your like value shelf, if you will. Yes. Um, and that's the Oregon rec market, California pretty much today as well. Um, we're starting to see that come into hemp, but there are groups that are, and you know, getting my soapbox here for a minute, that are adding to this confusion because they are branding things as live resin when it's there's no live resin involved. So yeah. they'll, if you ever heard of the term like live resin terpene, this is just marketing. Um, <laughs> and there's a couple groups uh, that are terpene providers that are pulling just terpene alone, steam distilling fresh material. And because it's fresh material, so fresh biomass, uh, they're steam distilling the, those terpenes off and then they are marketing it and selling it out to the um, to manufacturers as live resin terpenes. Now, I'll be generous and say you could call it a live terpene, potentially, in that it was freshly harvested and then processed. But to add resin in the mix, resin implies oleoresin, which is to say a um, cannabinoid-rich, most important uh, extract with fats and lipids, trace amounts. That's an oleoresin. So live resin being one of those. And um, so that's adding to some confusion in that there's people, you know, putting terpenes in a product, but they're saying, oh, it's live resin because of that. Or maybe we're trying to mimic the profile of a fresh harvested plant. So that's why it's live resin. And so um, it was already a kind of a complicated process that I just went through. <laughs> made more complicated by essentially people just trying to, to jump on like marketing and SEO, if I'm being frank. But that's my... Uh, <laughs> Qualm, I guess I've been seeing in, in the industry. And, but something you know, we kind of saw happening, all, all things is, are good in the sense of people are understanding live resin more. Uh, they're, they're more intrigued by it. And um, that's why we set out and we didn't just run any old live resin. We used our resources and our network to find the best cultivars, the best options. And we could touch on that a little later when I get the mic, but we'll, we'll look at some of like our day trip knockout. We made intentional blends those those cultivars but um but yeah that's that's one thing is to in, in short live resin has to come from an extract live terpenes or anything there are it can be a high quality hemp terpene but a hemp terpene alone terpenes are part of live resin but live resin are not a part of terpenes if that makes sense okay. it doesn't yes. go the other way and um and there's a lot of kind of disinformation of people selling terpenes. and you can see that on a coa if you see a product it says live resin, but it's only CBD or it's only Delta 8. Well, it can't really be live resin because it would need yeah. to have CBDA, CBGA, CBC, these other cannabinoids that came from the resin. And, and if that's one takes away, whether they're looking at our products or anyone else's, check the COA, know, share what you got. Um, you're saying live resin, you know, call people out, <laughs> make sure you're getting what you're, what you're sold. I mean, to, for, for the consumers to wrap their head around it, it's, it's the equivalent as like, 
like a fresh squeezed orange juice. You can go buy concentrated juice. Nice. It's concentrated. You can go buy some, some, you know, juice blend, but it's not direct from the plant. It's not like this thing here became this in a few yes. minutes. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? It could, it could even be, yeah, it could even be like, yeah, it's like, and that's perfect. We've used that before where it's like fresh squeezed orange juice is live resin. And then it it might be your, like your, your concentrate live resin. Whereas terpenes is like one more step. It's like, that's, that's your orange flavoring. Orange flavor. Yes. This is actual like, like fresh yeah. orange juice and then terpenes, orange flavor is good. That's if it's botanical, you know, botanical terpene, meaning not from hemp, that's maybe your orange flavoring. And, and that's what a lot of people are doing. And then if you have like hemp terpenes, now this is uh, orange juice concentrate and then raw orange juice. So maybe like those, yeah. but that's a good way to put it for sure. Yes. Well, uh, you know, the food background comes, you know, you eat brand yeah. that works out. So and, and you mentioned you're out of Oregon. <clears throat> Oregon, I think, is putting out some of the best quality flour, both on the THC side and the and the, the C B D side. And and you're and I want to talk about some of the products we're going into the DA stuff, some of the other products that the, the modern herb company offers. I mean, you're you offer moon rocks, you offer cartridges, you offer uh, different types of dabs, you know, gummies, caramel, soft gels. What's, well, what's your favorite edible, by the way, between those three? If you had to say one, just throw it out there. Yeah, yeah. I'd say, you know, depends on the, on the cannabinoid and what I'm going for. I take our, our CBD day trip soft gel um, hey. pretty often, um, you know, with my coffee in the morning. Um, one of our, um, our business development director, uh, she kind of coined a term on it, Brandy did, on um, – it being like coffee without the jitters. And I think that's a really perfect way to put wow. it. Um, it's got CBD, CBDA, CBG. It's got the CBDV, which is a certain live resin we got. And we put this blend together to be focus oriented. And that's something that um, hemp or cannabis didn't have before. We can cover pain, we can cover inflammation, but in terms of a focus product, it's like caffeine rains all, you know, and, yes. and something that helps with focus and puts you in that mindset um, it was really exciting for us to see as an option. So I'd say on, on the, something I'm taking daily is soft gels, or we have it in a tincture as well. But in terms of just edibles, say the soft gel, if I'm looking for something psychotropic or to get a good, you know, to get a psychotropic, but that gets you high, um, our, our D8, uh, our live D8 gummies are, are something yeah. special. Yeah. They, we use just enough live resin to help potentiate the, the Delta-8. So you get the psychoactive component with the Delta-8, but then the, the live resin in there helps it kick on and go a little longer. Um, and it's got just enough flavor that's just perfect of cannabis flavor to it without being overwhelmingly bitter or anything. Um, I think for me, if I'm going to if I'm gonna get intoxicated, I want it to be tasty. And that's kind of more the gummy. Oh, yeah. If it's something that's more like, functional then i like a soft gel just let's get it down and keep moving um but they're all good in their own right our caramels are all organic ingredients a little bit more like of a unique option um, and they're great but they also are standard butter and i'm more like plant-based so um i stick on the gummies and soft gels okay so it's for you sell flour also and the same flour that you use that you extract for all the extracts is the same flour that you use for like moon rocks, the same flour that goes into the, like the extract for the cartridges, the same flour that goes into the dabs or like different levels. It's generally, um, so we, a, a big partner of ours is the folks I've been privileged to work with now, you know, this is like the fifth year, East Fort Cold Tavares down in Southern Oregon. Um, we harvested a lot of their material for six of the cool Tavares we have in live resin. And you see our sour pineapple, Oregon sweet gum. These are proprietary genetics that they bred. And then we're also a partner uh, distributor for them as well. So we have their, their raw flour as well. Um, we will be launching some pre-rolls with their material, but right now it's just our fueling our live resin products. And then we have it in raw flour. Um, and then we work with some other partner farms for um, mainly it's like East Fork is our sun grown organic option. We work with um, some partner uh, farms that have contracts with us to grow out greenhouse flour for our um, like infused blends. Mm -hmm. And we're working with um, other partners for our indoor flour. So the indoor and greenhouse 
Typically what's used in live resin is sun-grown flour. Okay. Full term sun-grown being important. Um, and it's not just because, you know, some might think, oh, that's because it's a cheaper option, but I've actually ran indoor flour um, right next to the same genetic grown sun-grown and we get a better yield and a better product off sun-grown than you would off indoor, which doesn't, it's kind of a misnomer. It's three times. No, it's not a misnomer. If you, if, if, yeah. like for me, I, I, I equate all this to food and food yeah. grown under the sun is better than food grown uh, under a roof. Uh, it's just exactly the same right. way. The sun has something magical you can't explain that benefits no. plants. It really, it, no more needs it really be said. Like it, yeah. And, and, and if people, if you say it like that, people are like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And I've always yeah. said, even as like on a THC side, that indoor is nice, it looks good, but it's kind of like light, if you will. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's something not there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's 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 appealing and it, it's marketable. But yeah, if you're looking for like the best experience, I don't know if that always happens with indoor. Yeah, yeah, and then it's like this plus going that full term, you know, because there's something like called auto flowers, which are right seeds that you put them in the ground, they just start going. Um, that's not going to yield you the same product as as a full term. So we do always full term and always sun grown on the live resin. And then we do try to kind of follow what you just outlined. We kind of try to call it the soil the oil story. It's a goal for us. If someone finds that the sour pineapple is a terpene profile that they really enjoy, well, we want to offer that in a bunch of manufactured goods. But yes, also pre-rolls, flour, tincture, vape cards. Like if you found one that works, um, take note of that as well. Like, okay, this is limonene and ursine dominant. That's right and other products not even just ours and that's you know a big part of our our goal here is you know be you know um champions for quality but really education and and let's just further this industry and, and that's why like each of our products we've got the top terpene profile associated on the back where if you notice that something's working for you you can see well here's the top five cannabinoids in this product maybe cbg is beneficial for you oh and it's got exactly. So then they can, you know, you can get from that and sure, come back to us if you want, but also arm yourself next time you walk into a local store, you know, the CBG plus some limonene is, was good for you last time. Let's look for that in the next product. That's very important. You hit on something really, really important. That is the absolute truth because people do, it's almost like we're all shooting in the dark. We have been this whole time. Like, oh, well, that strain works. And even though you might get that same strain the next time, because it's, it's maybe from a different plot in the same, you know, yeah. you know. It, 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 in the same grow, you know, it could be something totally different, you know, and this is the beautiful thing yeah. I think about extracts, you get the same thing just about every time. Let's, let's hop into a couple questions about D8. Yeah, your oh. website has an array of Del Delta A products, and, and by 2020 standards, you know what I mean, like everyone talking about Delta A, it's like the hot thing, and then some people are like, what is it? Are they afraid of it? Um, I was afraid of it, and I think like, talking to people like yourself uh, and Brandy it helped me not be afraid of it, you know, um, what what DA products do you sell the most of? And like, why do you think that is? Yeah, um, I'd say you know maybe by overall kind of products customers served, I'd still probably say our Delta Eight gummies. Okay. Um, you know, people really like just a, a tried and true edible. Um, I'd say probably that, and then to our you know that might be more on our site, then through our retail partners for a modern co brand. Um, I'd say our vapes. And, and because we're, you know, with Modern Herb Co, we've now incorporated live resin in everything. We can't live resin in the product. It's just not something we're making. So, um, you know, it's kind of having the Delta 8, but having that live resin is such a key element to it. And so I'd say our, our, our vapes and gummies being our, probably our highest sellers, or most, the best feedback where people are like, wow, this isn't anything like, I've, like nothing I've had, you know, in the space by having that live resin, it's, because distillate alone is very much so like, you know, we had a good analogy you just came up with on the, on the fresh squeezed versus the concentrate and the, and the flavoring. Um, as I look at it anecdotally, distillate alone is very much so like a quick spike up and a quick spike down in terms of my- Very true. Wow. Yeah, and that can, some people really like that. For me, I can get a little uncomfortable for that like roller coaster ride up. I'm kind of- yes. like, And then you're there and then you crash down and you kind of get this like mental fatigue of like, whoa, I just like- now I'm like, it's a, it's a come down that's kind of heavy. Whereas with the live resin, you're adding in these other cannabinoids. It's going to make that more gradual and then go longer. Yes. 
more so what we're looking for in an edible vape, really anything. Um, it's coming up slow enough. I'm still getting to where I want to be. My experience is nice. And then I'm coming down and I don't have much of that fallout, if you will. Um, so that, and that's something we've just now launched the live gummy. So I'm excited to hear the world's feedback more so on that. Um, we've only got one flavor out now, but we have like the effect based blends that I'll touch on later, um, coming into those as well. But yeah, in short, um, the live resin, uh, gummies and, and vapes are, are kind of more well received and say, and I think it's because that like people notice that, you know, it may not be if it's just a pure Delta product in terms of that uptake. Yeah, sure, you might get there quicker, but your our feedback is you're getting a more enjoyable kind of longitude of a experience by adding the live resin. I think that's what's had people notice that and then come back to that one. Very smart. Now, that said, who's your? What does a typical DA customer look like? Like, if, like you don't have a typical necessarily vape customer or necessarily a typical edible customer, but like when I say that, is there like a certain yeah. demographic? Is it like 18 to 20 something year old college kid? Is it, you know, the 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 mom or, or dad who's just looking for a little bit of, you know, relief? You know, is it, is it the older set who's like, you know, which I feel like it's probably not them, but, you know, who, what are you seeing? Yeah, yeah, it's um, <clears throat> as much as we can answer it, you know, I, I think generally, um, you know, we serve, we service two markets, we service uh, markets that don't have access to recreational tested compliant products. So, you know, yes. markets that don't have recreational cannabis and, and that is going to be, um, you know, a broader range and it's a great thing. It feels really good to be able to service those markets because their alternative right now is traditional market. There's no testing, there's no quality assurance. Um, they're not checking IDs. They're not doing these different steps. And so being able to service that does feel good to know that we're, you know, providing a highly tested, high quality product there. And that kind of can, then from there, we step into, so, you know, underserved markets. Then the other main market we're looking towards is, because we saw Delta 8, I saw it hit Oregon four years ago. Wow. And it was actually marketed as social uh, by Select, by Cura, a competitor of mine at the time. Um, huh. And it was geared towards that it's a more functional version of Delta 9 in that it's, it's a bit more mild. It does naturally occur in cannabis and hemp, but trace amounts, um, mm -hmm. going to the conversion process, how it's made, but um, it, it's a more functional form of, of the, like compared to Delta 9 THC. Uh, so there's some folks that just want that, like, you know, maybe they're entry level into it and want to step into it. They're looking for something more mild, but in terms of the feedback we get, I mean, it runs the whole gambit. You know, I've got like, like my dad, my partner's grandmother love our, our D, D8 caramels um, as like a dessert to help them 45 minutes, an hour later, they're perfectly ready for bed. It helps my dad. Um, so he uses it more so there. Um, I'd say our vapes are generally, um, you know, as you kind of assume more 25 to 40 bell curve of, you know, folks looking for something portable and on the go. Um, so maybe it depends like on the product by the demographic. That makes sense. But, but I think generally it's someone that either doesn't have access to good tested cannabis products. Um, they're looking for a safe alternative that then, you know, has these cannabis like qualities by having the live resin. Or um, even if they are in a rec state where they have access to Delta 9, they're wanting something more functional and, and less psychoact, less psychotropic as Delta 9 can be can give you a little bit more of the grogginess or some of the, you know, uh, anxiety. Some people can, can um, say that they're feeling it's less likely to occur with Delta 8, at least like anecdotally from what we see. Someone told me that it's, it's like neck down, you know, like that's kind of how they described it. You don't get all the yeah. stuff that happens here, but everything that kind of happens here. Yeah. Know? And it's, it's kind of like those, those like rules of thumb. It's, you know, we can just call them that. It's like generally, mm -hmm. It's more of a body high, if you will, as compared to Delta 9, but everyone's got their own endocannabinoid system and we all interpret and kind of go through it. So, um, that is so because yeah, still, you know, Delta 8 had a good potency, you eat four or five of our gummies. I'm, I'm feeling it neck, head everywhere, you know, if I have enough. So, so it just depends on, I guess, the dose and the product, but that's a good way to put it. It's, 
more under, understanding that way. Um, I kind of say that it's 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 more functional because I also make live resin Delta Nine gummies in the rec market, separate business, and um, they they're they're just different. Yeah, one's just a little bit more functional with the D eight, but but still in the same thread. Yeah. I gotta say, man, it's like the, this is usually I do like do these interviews like 30, 45 minutes. This is the longest interview I've ever done. And this is probably one of the most fascinating interviews I've ever done. I don't know if everyone's gonna be feeling it the way I do, but I think they will because we were touching on some really, really, really good stuff. And I think that's not appreciate that. Yeah. Sure, so we got more to come. We got I got like two more questions. We're gonna get you out of here. Cool. Um, okay. so what's the average dose for people who don't know? Of delta eight like what is of course suggested does you see like yeah. i see 10 i see 40 usually i see 40 is like on the high end are we talking like 20 is that about right and does that change from an edible to a vape yeah so looking to edibles and again this is like choose your own adventure everybody's different tolerance your um your different different there's different uh, variables to it but generally mm -hmm. speaking um 10 milligrams of Delta-9, this is for me, is roughly equivalent to the effect I get on 25 milligrams of Delta-8. Okay. And, okay. and it makes sense in that the, you know, generally cannabis industry, 10 milligrams of Delta-9 is a serving, if you will. Um, right. We always say start with half. So on the rec gummies, start with half and see where you go. And then same thing, our gummies are all 25 milligrams. Our soft gels are 25 milligrams. Um, it seems to be if you have someone with a higher tolerance, they might want a 50. Well, our gummies are only three grams. You can have two gummies and still be under five grams of sugar or right. two gels. And, um, and that's generally what I'd say. We always say you, know, you can always take that hour and bump that up. So if it's a first time user, have half a gummy, see how you feel, um, you know, whether you've got a full stomach or you slept well the night before. There's all these different factors. No doubt contribute to it you know one might hit me one way today and then i've well rested and and full stomach tomorrow and now i need to so that's why it's it's good to you can always go up you can't really go back right. so it's good to yeah. start with half and work towards it but you know i now we're starting to see markets start to mature we don't have um like the regulatory thresholds yet in place for the hemp market mm -hmm. another room for improvement that we have so you're starting see edibles come out 50 milligrams 100 milligrams that gets a little reckless to me i think um you know for a first time user no doubt. Uh, i use cannabis and delta and, and cbd products daily i would be uncomfortable with 100 milligrams and not like this, the product so let alone if someone grabbed a few of those so i think having controlled doses is important we're, we're going to keep ours at 25 um for the foreseeable, we think it's a good place that the industry's kind of landed with. Um, but yeah, we'd say 25 and, and then with everything, if you haven't tried the product before, start with half and, and you can work your way up from there. It's very smart, it's very smart. And then about the average pull on the vape is about, about 20, something like that. Yeah. I guess it depends on the concentration, of course, of the car. Yeah, depends on the concentration, your puffs. So that's, we, we kind of say more so like one to two puffs, you know, okay. you can and 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 uh, activation time is the term for an edible is going to be anywhere from 30 minutes up to two hours to mm -hmm. start to feel it again depending on what i ate and all these other factors um but it can take up to two hours to reach its peak wow um that's important to keep in mind when try excuse me when trying an edible is knowing that that peak could still be coming so yeah. give it an hour and a half two hours before you redose the vapes are nice or a dab is nice because it's within five minutes, you know, just right. like or something. So yeah. you can take that, the puff or two, see where you are and just kind of go until you're at your desired effect. That's the beautiful thing about vapes and it's controllable where I find yeah. a lot of people get a little antsy on the edibles. They think it's going to happen the same way as that their flower yeah. experience. You know? So we, everybody's got that, like that horror edible story, right? And he tells <laughs> to my cancer, oh, I don't touch cannabis. I had a brownie back in 79 and oh I- Oh my God. Many times I've heard that story and it's like, I know, huh? you had a controlled dosing <laughs> back then. And you had a guy selling it to you behind 7-Eleven and he says, oh, they're potent. You know, it's now it's tested, lab tested, you know, it's specific. Um, now it's controllable and that's, that's what's needed. And, um, and yeah, it's just good to build up to it. Okay. So we'll do a quick question. This is, this is part, this is my question. I have to do this in. Oh. <clears throat> Can you dab 
D8 distillate in the same way or like under the tongue as you can like a CBD or THC distillate? Does it work in the same way? It is fully decarboxylated, meaning as a distillate, it is fully active. So wow. it is fully available um, in, the, in the raw distillate form. So you can okay. put it under the tongue. Uh, you can you know, work it into sauces. You can cook with it. We actually make um, live D8 drippers. So we take the Delta 8 and we combine it in the live resin. Um, we put it into a dripper. That is our preferred method, and we hope to help catalyst a revolution away Dude, from- I think you're onto something. It's like, it's part of the reason I'm asking you this question. I tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. It's we like- have more to talk about. Flower. <laughs> Let's just keep the flower separate. And yes. as you want, cool. You want to add it to a joint? I can roll a joint, put some, a little dripper tip on it and it will burn down into it. Add it onto my bowl, you know, keep it a little bit more targeted, keeps my flowers yeah. fresh. It's, it's a, yeah. I like that, that route. Yes, you can, like, it, and now it, it could become an edible, it could become a beverage, it could become anything you want, you know? That's awesome, yes. Okay, so everybody, that no one gets out of here without doing the shameless plug. And this shameless plug is really, we talk about you, your company, whatever you guys are, are promoting right now. If you wanna give a sale, if you wanna offer a promo code, whatever you're excited about, uh, but most importantly, like how you help people. So. Give them your website. You want to give them your phone number. Give them your personal phone number if you want. I don't care. But <laughs> you got a minute on the clock, man, and we'll get you out Ooh, of here. Okay. I know it's Friday. Yeah. And you want to go enjoy your weekend. So. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think what I'd like to touch on is just our um, effect base buckets, if, if I will. Um, you know, essentially in, in the cannabis market, it's kind of a, a misnomer at this point, but sativa hybrid indica. You know, it's mm -hmm. the way people classify cannabis. That's kind of been gone since the 90s in reality. Everything's a hybrid today. No so, doubt. You know, a land race sativa from Africa and like an indica from the Afghani mountains. Like it's all hybridized. No but doubt. The deal is people want to know, is this good for usage before I go to the gym? Is this good for going to bed? Is this good for just chilling? Like they want to know those bases. So we looked at that and when we sourced the different genetics we got, we said, in our mind like how do we fit those different buckets and do it in a way that's backed by science and truth rather than just you know botanical terpenes of blue dream or og kush that are not cannabis derived so with that we created three blends we have our day trip anytime and knockout and our day trip is we took cbdv dominant genetics so barren genetics that are what we're finding, it's a brand new genetic that came out last year, um, Oregon CBD, Pine Walker, Forbidden V, and I got to give it up to the pioneers, Tejas Hemp, with their garlic jam and their guava jam. They were some of the first out there in genetics. Wow. Called Bright CBD. A THC, guys. That's hemp. That's crazy. That's hemp. Yeah. 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 So it's CBDV and THCV dominant hemp. Um, and it, it's what we put the first one into a cart. We're puffing on it, seeing what it's, what it's feeling like. And it's, I call it bright CBD. It's very stimulating. I felt it more in like my front of my head rather than the back. If I puff on a CBD cart too long, I can sometimes get a little bit more mellowed. Whereas this was very pointed and bright. And so we were like, let's lean into that. So we got a bunch of it. We ran it on the live resin and then we supplement in CBG. So we take, this is actually our um, our pine walker 5d8 the the day trip um and then we've got the farm here this is from lady land Organic. i love that box awesome. thank you yeah um so that's the cbdv live resin plus cbg um and that's available with the delta or the cbd blends um and that's going to be your more up sativa like then our anytime is our more flavor focused varieties so like sour pineapple from east fork cultivars um pink panther from Ladyland Organics that was grown by, um, they're bred by High Alpine Genetics in North Carolina. Um, oh, wow. Cool strain, yeah. Um, so those are our anytime and that's just live resin plus your base oil. And then knockout is to speak to that couch lock desire. So that's gonna be like Bubba Kush live resin, uh, Llama Kush from East Fork, um, some OG Kush from Ladyland Organics, a really unique one. And then we further supplement in CBN. So the CBN is going to be a more, you know, sedation focus. So that's our goal was to then create these three buckets. And then if someone likes our day trip in the cartridge that we offer on our website, 
um, we now have that in soft gels. So you can get that same effect. That's the one I was talking about. I take that in the yes. morning CBD day trip. Um, so we're speaking to that sativa hybrid indica, but in a way that's that's backed by science, that's backed, you can see it on the COA, it's got those cannabinoids, it's got those terpenes, and that's the direction for it. So right now on our website, you can find the um, modernherbco.com, you can find our um, the day trip knockout anytime cartridges, but we'll be launching the gummies here in like the next two weeks. We've got the soft gels out as well. Um, and then uh, tinctures and the dabs. Excellent. Good. Yeah. You guys are doing it right. You are making this industry proud. You're making customers happy. I just want to give you guys a clap up. Appreciate so that. Fun. Yeah. We've yeah. got a really good team. Yeah. We've, you know, that's the one thing I'll tell you. Do. Like our whole team comes from the rec space. We're all passionate about cannabis. Our production manager is an you know, in house chemical engineer. Um, we've got folks that have been caring about this plant in our little microcosm of Oregon, which is a very competitive uh, Petri dish because there's just so much competition and so much good product. Oh, yeah. It's forged us, it's made us tough. And then now we're able to kind of share it with the open market. It's um, it's fun. And we got a lot of, well, lot of work to do. Dude, yeah. keep doing it. You're doing you're doing it right. And Modern Herb Company guys, check them out. Um, we're we're going to check you out. So hopefully maybe we may be you can help us direct us to carry some of these similar products, man. Because you know, we're, we're trying to be like you guys. We're you know we're modeling ourselves after you, and that is, I'm not ashamed to say that. So yeah, well, I appreciate thank you. The time. Thanks for having me, dude. Thank you so much. Thank you for offering all this insight, and you have a great weekend. Likewise. Okay. Thanks, Bye. Terry. You're welcome. Bye bye.